Okay, well, hello. How's everyone doing? I am. I said I was going to try and upload more videos, so I'm going to do some. I've only I'm only playing for 25 minutes, and I haven't really had. I'm not really going to commit the time to table selecting. So if I'm going to play for 25 minutes, I might as well play fast forward. Normally, if I plan to play longer. I would um, do a full session, I would table select, but the fast forward pool is probably going to be reasonable at this time. So hopefully the tables are soft. We're always looking for soft tables, not hard tables, to maximize our EV. I'm starting to learn a little bit more about how this pool is playing. And I've also had to adjust a little bit to some preflop stuff to uh, to the rake and um, implied odds, just stack sizes, just think just things like this. And so forth. So here we have King Free suited. I believe it should be plus EV open. There is a fish called Golden and Button, but you know, suited King. Uh, 2x open, possible recreational, but I don't know. We either have to defend Jack 7 against that. So with a fish, I have a choice. I could bet very small with this guy in the blind. I might just just check like this type of hand and see what happens, develops. Yeah, we typically just check back on the king. Probably gonna check fold bluff river, fold to this this line. We don't know if he's a recreational player or not. We attack recreational players more than um, actual players. This guy called calls the button. So now we're just gonna bet one third. At this point, I just kind of want to build the pot. There's a lot of hands. We could probably even size up a little bit. There's a lot of hands that we'll call here. But yeah, it's not. Uh, yeah, I couldn't use multiple strategies here. I could go big, I could go small. I think I just two thirds turn. This is a recreational player. Again, I could bet, I could check. It just depends whether I think he's going to pass stuff or not. I think I'll just check and see what it develops. I think we just check. Yeah. Um, there's no reason not to raise here for Valley. It's unlikely he has a two. Let's just go really big. Now, this is interesting. He just like calls a turn and just jams the river on the nice. So he's kind of saying he has like a two pair. Um, this is a spot where I don't have to take. But it might be profitable depending on his tendencies. I'm gonna call and see what he does. Okay, he just has a nuts. Fair enough. Uh probably can size up on this one. And this is one of these spots where like when you're against a fish, generally they they generally are they they in these spots they're not it's not impossible for them to just like blast off. Basically, but like when he goes so big, um, it's probably like you could probably start letting go of hands. But I, I got very curious and I wanted to see. <laughs> um, we don't know if this guy is a recreation player, so we'll just play a normal strategy to see about quarter pot. Yeah, I mean here it's kind of just like you thought. So I've generally I would take a note of this like position brief I've called a forty big blind. Ten seven suited. Um just check here. As I check call thirty, bet two fifty gem. Uh yeah. Wow, let's go. Oh he's raised us, okay. Easy call. Check in, check fold here. Interesting, he goes check, bet check. Yeah, he could have stuff like his queen and things, so we'll probably just check in, hoping he was bluffing, so he was not. Uh, here on this line, probably. I could block, but I feel like my, my range is just like either gonna be two thirds, so I'll just I'll just use block though. 
Uh, yeah, okay, fair enough. Here I can block or I can just check back. I think I'm going to check back here. I think there's only a few types of hands that are in the spot. It's just like complete air or like very strong hand rally hands. So recreational we check. Uh, this was king eight six. Now we just call him. He had exactly what he was repping, but like for such a tiny bet size, and you know I'm not gonna fold. Because like so he's the check race check. So like that air portion of the range we talked about. Um, you know, if it's something like nine eight hearts, eight seven the hearts, there's no reason for that to to not bluff. He could just try one third. So just an easy call. This is a hand that's pretty much zero EV fit in theory. I like I generally just open it when there's recreations in the blinds. This is one of the things I've been studying pre-flop is hands like that and small pocket pairs I need to really select the tables more because there's not really an incentive to open them versus a reg. Like on a table full of regs, especially considering they have they will use multiple sizes. Improve off strategies. Finchy. The recreational. We have the info. That's the guy who stacked me. We probably should have could have like got that info from the uh, previous hand. I just forgot to tag him. This is worth watching. Just caught a pot, see what with range. That's seven eight off still. I'm learning like more and more of these like multi way with these type of hands, so I can't really shoot a spot. He raises, he goes kind of small with early position. I think this is a hand that kind of like could actually fold here, but I'm kind of arrogant. <laughs> I genuinely think this hand is like really close to a fold when you're early position. It's obviously a snap call in the pattern. 5 4, we have fish. Potential fish. We just open. Okay, so like, good thing about these spots like this is uh, he does have 5 3 suited, but like, there's just going to be just a bunch of flash draws here. So we just call one and we just fold if he bets the river. It's a very easy hand to play. A spot like this. And then we check and either we're gonna beat flash draw, showdown against like some kind of like King X of Diamond or Ace X of Diamond. Or he just like has like twos or like King Four or something. And then okay, six seven is Interesting turn barrel. I don't think he should barrel that in theory. Um, I'm going to probably turn this into a bluff. I say turn it into a bluff. It's kind of like probably the best hand now, but if I get caught, I could also be ahead if I get caught, but I could have bluff it on the river. Um, two. Do we have any info on this guy? Ah, uh, I don't really believe him, so I'm gonna raise. But it's kind of like uh, we're gonna see, you know. Mm, so he calls. Is this just Queen X? I'm looking at like some history I have, and like he's using very big sizes when he has. And so like maybe he has like sevens here. 
So I'm going to try like a two thirds of a bet and see. But if he just has a queen, then I learn something new about him. Uh, he also has a flush draw here, a decent amount. So probably isn't best to, to bluff here. But <laughs> yeah, my guess is the range is like just uh, just because he went, he bet fifty on the turn. So my my guess was he just had. I mean, this was a very good card to bluff on because like I can be perceived to be very strong. This guy's free betting a lot. But I don't know enough to like jam this as a semi bluff, but I'm a little tempted. Um, yeah, he's like his bet fifty on a turn. Like if I expect just based on some of the patterns on how he's bet before, I just think he just doesn't have a queen here or a very strong hand. But so like, I think he could just have like eights. He could, you know, something like that. Um, I think I'm going to use this size. And we have loads of like nuts here. I think I can two thirds the river to probably just fold to a jam now. Sufficient blind, we're going to open. So this is like something I would. Take a note down. Like his uh, check, bet 50 cool. And the board was like 10, 3 deuce. Queen four. So like here's it's typically enough information to tell me about stuff. But my hand, um, the only reason I would I would never do this without equity. They're like. What I'm learning is like if I had just like a complete air ball, I probably wouldn't do it. Attack him. But if I just if I just have like even just a gut shot here, I think it's probably enough to make it plus EV. When I'm talking plus EV, I'm talking very small amounts. Um, let's not make a night. Let's watch the hand night. We're just checking our range here. I think when he double checks on the ace ten king, the best hand he's gonna have here is king queen, and he could just have like queens, jacks. So I think we have a value bet. I think our hand's worth two thirds, so I mean we could have a one third there too. Might be more successful, I don't know. Two win two X. Make a note. Ah, uh, this is a guy who might be a wreck. So I'm just gonna bet my hands the size I want it want, want to bet it, and kind of just go from there. Really, then just put him on a range eight sevens, nine sevens. If he's like flat in here, he could have fours, threes, lots of like pairs with hearts. So just like just gonna bet the size I want to bet. Of course, nine eight does come in, but we have equity, so we don't mind like being raised too much. Uh, there's also here he could flat stuff like Azex of parts and stuff. So I think I'm just checking down. I don't think I'm getting called now much on the river. Um, I'm a two thirds. This flush comes in. Yeah, nines okay. It's hard to know if this guy, um, considering betting the turn here, yeah. actually gonna mix this as a check raise. Okay, he doesn't. <laughs> this is an annoying spot because so he has like a bunch of pairs here, ace, ace highs and stuff, but the ace highs just don't fold on this board. 
Um, and he turns his pairs into a bluff a lot. So I kind of don't want to bluff here, but he, because I just don't think he folds ace high very often. He had king high. Actually, those are like one of the few hand types that will actually fold the river, so I guess it was worth a, a bluff. But I'd say the majority of his range is is like ace high and pocket pairs. So I decided not to take that bluff and spawn. Usually I bluff a lot, but yeah, I guess stuff like king seven. It's interesting he just doesn't bluff this on the turn. Because, like, what is, he, what is he actually bluffing on the turn? If it's not a hand like this, it's a rainbow turn. I check it. They're very interested. So, that way, we could actually make a note of that. Yeah, cool 25. I mean, he might have bluffed on the river. Big 7 suited. Oh, oh yeah, I need to do it right out the board. I can't remember what the term was. Now they have to do And we isolate. I kind of rush my size in there. I could actually just size up a bit, especially if the blind could call call. Oh, he just shoves, which is <laughs> obviously not cool. And his free BB open, his free bet. Um, so if I get four bet shoved, I'm gonna snap calling because there's a lot of ace kings, and it will have some jacks and queens in there, but there's a lot of ace kings. And like some ace queen on face fives and stuff, but like if I get a, um, I think I'm gonna open this versus rig. If I get a small four bet, I probably won't shove against the four bet in that spot. But I open this because I think this is a recreational player. We open quite wide versus recreations. Sometimes you will get free bet by the reg sometimes, but the recreational will basically allow that to be plus EV. And we can out king nine four mono. <laughs> um, this is a a mergey value slash protection bet. <laughs> I say cool against the fish because I think like a fish will if he's super passive he's gonna like. He will float just like random flush draws. Um, but like he's very unlikely to have a pair. But like we just bet. We will get value from random flush draws and we can decide whether we check call. We we bluff to make making it for the pair. You no, know, it depends. Or we just bet to make not have to deal with him bluffing. And now uh, we're gonna squeeze this. Uh, it's not early position, no, actually. I think I just take a flop instead. And they're like these type of hands can squeeze a lot, but I prefer to do more against early position range than cut off range. 2.9. Be cool. I think it's possibly a recreational. We check in here again. Um, I'm very convinced that we had, That guy just folded. I'm very convinced we have the best hand here. Um, I'm going to go for like an over bet. He probably, if he has a 10, he's not going to fold. So. Um, I think this might be a recreational player. I'm just going to bet the river um, this size and you know, we fold them off at ASX with diamonds and stuff and like we could even pressure some king x to fold but I doubt it 
And if he just has an 8, I don't expect him to fold regardless, so... Yeah. Yeah, this guy had a 10. We could have even sized up here, but like... I feel like 125 is enough in this spot. Uh, we're just going to shove here, because if, if we fall, but I mean, we could actually do this thing, like, that I've been told, that like, if you're against the short stack wreck, is to fall, but then small, give them another decision. Um, but then, you know, you get flop, you have to play post-flop in situations like this. Um, so yeah, whatever, I'm not folding, so I'm just going to bet really small, and if you jam, we just cool. Yeah, it's kind of a sad spot, but like we literally have 70% of the spot behind, so if there's ever a chance, I mean, because he's a recreational, he can have all sorts. Yeah, he can also just have an ace or a jack, but I'm like, yeah, we're just, we're just cool and like we're never ever folding ever. And yeah, we actually saved some money there by playing it the way we did because he was unwilling to value jam. Uh. I'm trying to think. Oh yeah, I went check. Cool. I'm gonna use a one, a one third size. Cool, right? I was trying to trying to think. Like, re remember this spot, but like, yeah. And then I think we have a very good bluffing candidate. I think I should check this one down. I think I'm gonna go big. Like really big. I've liked the idea that I've tanked here because it makes me think like um, you know. The more I tank, the more it's like I'm like, I could look strong. I don't know how to explain. But like, he might not have had a close decision there. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna call here. We could have also probed the turn, but better to let him. Sometimes we can just let him bluff. Oh, we actually just got there against the jack. There's all these things I've been told is like, um, it's, I'm not convinced that this works, I'm just trying it, but I've been told by people who are, let's say, I've been, I've heard against like people who are better players than me, you know, if you have a recreation of just like four better than give them another decision, because like say he's four better than me with complete nonsense, right, there's a good chance that he could just like punt it off into me, but like ace king is obviously not nonsense. But I mean, regardless, if I just jam equals and I lose the pot, but like, it's not that bad to end up post flop. It's just that you end up in these one SPR pots when you do use these wit these strategies. This guy just cold called my ISO, so I'll just check and see if he blasts. Uh, I'm actually gonna mix this as a check raise. Usually quite effective strategy here. I like obviously value. He doesn't use super big, it also just gives me a bit more confidence he doesn't have Queen Jack. As well, based on how he plays, I don't really have any reads, but yeah, I'm definitely check raising him. And yeah, we're obviously calling here. I haven't really paid too much attention. We have a boat, I'm never going to check here. I mean, I think I would either use a block or a two-thirds size, so I'll just use a block. And we make... I mean, he does have like ace x of spades, but like... I don't think I want to check this, i just try and decide if... I think I like block call. Cool. I actually... If he does have like 10x of spades, I think he even shoves this as this. Um, now I'm going to just go really big here. Heck, I might even jam. 
I think maybe. Yeah, so he called so possibly like Queen X Hearts. The fact that he folded so so quickly, King X Hearts maybe. Like, but like it's very weird that he would bet a King X Hearts then. But he could have maybe merged it as a bet. That could also have just been like, I feel like two pages never folds to block. So very confused about what he had. Probably Queen X Hearts. Gets 2.2x, possibly recreationals, I guess I'll call. It's not a pan I'd be excited to VPIP. If there's a recreational in the here, then possibly. Min open, I guess early position still folds as a recreational player. So I'm not going to build the pot now. He pots turn. I actually like just calling here and, um, you know. See what he does in the river. <laughs> this is a milky size. We're going to try bluff. This can work. We can also just be folding him up. Yeah, he's not going to fold too pair, but at least we got the note here about what he's doing. So like cold calls, small blind. Queen Jack off. Let's fold. Um. Something like that. Let's say the board was something like that. Okay, well, basically we're at the end of our tenure. So I guess I'll sit out, play one more button. I'm not going to defend Queen 7, even against 2.2x. I'm going to fold here. No, this is a pure open actually. If I'm under the gun, I think I fold this hand there. Now we fold to free bet. We keep getting, we're trying to get buttons and we keep getting big blinds. But at least we got kings. It's a pretty nothing hand, so I guess I'll just bet. Generally, this line prints, so we'll do it. It is a table full of probable regs. And we're going to call. We have a gut shot. So, is this going to be a Just about 30. I don't want to raise a no equity hand, so I'll just float. But I don't think it would be the worst decision in the world to raise. Um, cool. He sizes up. So it goes bet 30, bet 50. We have an open ender, but it's not to the nuts. It's a mono board. This is actually interesting because I'm not actually sure if I should be calling this or not. Because it's a mono board, it's typically under bluff, so I'll fold. And like his bluffs probably also have. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's really interesting board. It's an interesting spot. I like to have an open ended straight that isn't to the nuts. To face that line, it's almost worth noting. Almost. I haven't. I don't think I've had a single button. A check raise bet. Interesting. I mean, I got a club, so cool. Let's 
that's a very interesting hand. Uh, this is a clear, probably an overbet spot too, in theory, but it's a clear bet regardless. And it's a clear value bet on the river. I think I just go for an overbet. Come over if you checked. Um, honestly, I could just like build a massive pot with this hand. It has so much equity, I could just call. So I'm just gonna call. <laughs> I don't. Know, I'm just gonna like pot control because like he just given me like a very easy decision here. Regardless. Um, he's gonna have a seven or a nine that calls, and then. Could you have like twos or threes? I think I'm going to just block this side on the river. Okay, he was just like diviling about, I guess. Okay, that was the last hand. Yeah, this one was a very interesting hand with the tens. Three about 3.7x. So I'm going to just make a note of some of his uh, sizes. And uh, let's make, make a note of the board. And it's just with his sizes. And he raised, it looks to be around 3x, just over 3x on the turn. And he just checked the river back, he didn't have the club. So I'll just like it this. It's very interesting. He's checking flop on seven five three flush shot. In position. This is like a super interesting hand because now in the future, I can look at this and like look at these kind of low boards. And having known that he's checked these boards back, I see him see bet like thirty or fifty percent. Now he he could be trying to play a balanced strategy, but in my opinion, it would more be more likely he doesn't have. Like he's more likely to be full of shit if his value hands aren't in this line as much. I mean, they could be in this line. Like he could be trying to randomize mix, but like anyone that's trying to play GTO is playing an inferior version of GTO. So I gotta try and exploit. But like this is why I make notes on showdowns like this because eventually you'll get a line where you're against that guy. This guy who bet fifty on the turn, you'll think ah he probably bets bigger when he has it. So I'm gonna bluff him more. Uh, that's why I spend the time making the notes, because it can help me develop a better strategy versus each player, even though you didn't see it too much in the session. Anyway, that was an interesting session. I would say there was one hand I probably overcalled, was probably the king free hand earlier. 250% jam, I don't really need to take the spot. I can just fold. I just thought, meh, let's, let's have a look. I'm streaming, and it's going to be posted on YouTube, so maybe I'll call and look really smart. He's doing it off, or he just has a nuts, which he just had a nuts. But I do think it's a spot that might be plus EV, but it's not. People might think it's a clear fold or a clear clear call, but I'd say it's a lot. If you play enough against fish, you kind of understand. And you've seen the data I've seen, you kind of understand uh, it's actually closer than it looks. But yeah, GG. I uh, hope everyone has a good day, and I am done.